Yeah, so this thing is like a brain that, uh, it's a safety feature, right? But, um, you know, we don't care about safety, so I'm gonna get rid of that. You guys can see my wiring skills, or lack thereof. Oh, that's kind of loose. I feel like this should be grounded. I'm fairly sure it should be, actually, but I don't know. I put this through the wrong hole, didn't I? The problem is all the adjustments are over on this side. Yeah. All right, we got this all wired up, I think. Today is the day. I'm finally going to start working on my metal melting foundry. It's it's been a while since I've been able to get out to the shop and uh, just, you know, having two kids keeps you busy. <laughs> That's all I can say. But anyway, let's get right down to it. This is an oil burner. This came out of my old furnace that uh, I had replaced and upgraded to an efficient system. And um, I know this still works because up until the day they replaced it, it was heating our house. So uh, it should work just fine. And I've never actually seen one of these things run before. Like, I've never seen the flame that it puts out. But I imagine oil is a very high BTU fluid. And I imagine if propane can melt aluminum and bronze, that oil should be able to as well. And I think, I think this is up to the task. There are, a couple, there are a couple things that I'm not too sure about. One is... Uh, I don't know if you can see it in there. There's a brass nozzle. That's that's where uh, the oil comes out of. And then this ring right here is just just little cheap metal piece here. Um, and with this stuck inside of an insulated furnace, I don't know if it's gonna hold up. I mean, we're just gonna try it, right? So, a little bit about oil burners. Growing up in the northeast of uh, United States, it's really common around here. A lot of people have oil heat. But um, other parts of the world, and even those parts of this country, people, um, they've never even heard of this before, I'm, I'm just finding out. So um, basically, home heating oil is just like diesel. It's about the same stuff. Um, it's pretty simple. So I'm going to put on this, this is actually a fuel rated um, hose here. So it sucks the oil in through here, and there's a high pressure pump. Um, I think it's about 150, 200 PSI or so and it pumps the uh, oil into a nozzle that then atomizes it and it sprays out. There's a big transformer on the top here that creates a spark that ignites the oil and then voila, you got flame. So there's uh, you know just two things on this really. There's a uh, switch for the spark to turn that on and then a switch to start the pump to blow oil out. And there's also uh, a blower, an air blower, and the motor that runs on this unit, the motor that runs the uh, oil pump, I believe, is the same thing that runs the fan. I mean, there are some adjustments on it that I, have, I wouldn't know anything about. So I'm not going to be too ambitious today. I just want to get this thing fired up. But let me show you, I've got this ceramic fiber insulation stuff that I got from a ceramic store. And this is an old drum from a, uh, a washing machine that I took apart once. But first things first, I need some oil. And where am I gonna get it? So I bought this little pump and my thought is that I'm just going to Stick this hose right down the oil fill on the side of my house and just suck the oil right out of the tank. Um, so again, if you're not familiar with oil heating, in the northeast here where it gets cold, uh, we have giant tanks in our basements that hold uh, several hundred gallons of flammable liquid, which sounds crazy actually, and, and, and it kind of is. Also because the liquid is extremely smelly, so if you ever have a leak in one of these things, it can ruin your entire basement and it just, it's awful to clean up. So, uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure why we use oil heat still. One thing that might be a problem is there are no less than three right angles 
as this pipe goes into the house and connects down to the tank. So this thing has to has to bend and make its way all the way down there. And, um, I'm just gonna have to see if this works. I don't know. Gas containers, if you look at the, the bottom of them, they have a number two and they say HDPE. Well, guess what? So do milk containers. It's high density polyethylene and that plastic is really resistant to most solvents and um, totally fine for storing diesel and heating oil and gasoline in. So I'm gonna pump it into these milk jugs. I guess if this all fails, I can go down to the gas station, buy a gas container, because I think they frown upon you filling milk jugs to the gas station. Diesel's expensive though, because it has transportation tax on it. Home heating oil doesn't, but they put a dye in it so that if you try and siphon it out of your tank and put it in your truck, well, every once in a while the state police will pull you over if you have a diesel truck and they'll put a dipstick down and check the color of your fuel. And if it's red, well, guess what? You're in trouble. That's probably what it's going to look like I'm doing, even though I don't have a diesel truck. But um, So I'm going to film this, but uh, I'm not going to narrate because my neighbors really think I'm crazy enough and um, I don't want to be talking to myself and wearing a GoPro and trying to siphon heating oil out of my house. So, yeah. Alright, so yeah, I got a little bit of uh, maybe like a quarter of a gallon or so in here. Um, I really didn't want to do that because the minute you open that up, it just fills the basement with, it smells horrible. And um, just hoping my wife didn't notice I was doing that. So, so I'm just waiting for her to go in the basement and start yelling at me. Alright, so anyway, <laughs> um, I got enough for a test run here. Obviously I gotta figure out a better method. At least get a better pump if I'm gonna... It's snowing. The first thing I wanna check is that I'm getting some kind of um, spray. Oh, yes. Oh, that's gross. Okay. And the wind's picking up. This is terrible conditions. Man, it's not sucking up any of this yet. It's just the residual oil that's in the pump. And, um, well, you know what, let's just try and fire it off, light it off here. Okay, nope. All right. Huh, I got an idea. Is she pumping? I don't know. 
somebody out there is laughing at me that, that knows what I didn't do. Um, I promise it's the same day, but the sun all of a sudden decided to come out after snowing. I, uh, anyway, uh, I noticed that there are some threads here with something missing, and it, it didn't really look like it was important, except that I think this is the valve. I totally ruined these threads because I got a pair of vice grips on them now with another wrench wedged underneath just to hold it open. But I think it's going to work now. So let's fire up the... Okay, we got the igniter going. Now let's see if she'll pull some oil. Maybe. Whoa! <laughs> Woo. All right. Smoky. Oh, shit. I think I lost my, uh, yeah, lost suction or something here. Oh, I got an idea. There's something over here that looks an awful lot like a bleeder valve. Yeah, you know what? I think... Yeah, it's not really a pump deal. It is... Yeah, okay, I get it. Okay, I think what this is, is the bleeder, but the pump, I think, will prime itself, basically. With this open, yep, it's circulating right through, getting rid of all the air bubbles. Now, if I close this back up, I should be able to get high pressure. Mission. All right. <laughs> There's some numbers here. It looks like this whole thing moves. Let's see. What's it on? It's on about five. Yeah, I want to see if moving this plate thing here does anything. Yeah, basically just a damper. So like less air, get more fire. Oh, I can get this hot. More air. It's probably a little bit cleaner, actually. I think you probably risk the flame going out. I don't know. Well, I was on five. I guess I'll leave it there. All right, just as a little experiment, I've got some old doorknobs and other cast zinc kind of odds and ends in here. I just want to see if this will this will melt this in this. Um, cast iron frying pan here and uh, I just heard pretty much all the cops in town and the fire department go by so someone's house must be on fire so let's hope I don't burn down mine because I think they're gonna be too busy to come and help me so all right here goes nothing Something shiny in the bottom of that pan. Oh, I don't like this wind. All right, well, it's snowing again, and the wind's picking up. This is a really weird day. Uh, and also, I'm seeing some greenish flames coming out of here, so I think what that means interesting yeah I think I was like basically burning the zinc and 
yeah, I don't want to inhale zinc fumes. That's really bad for you. So I'm going to just back away a little bit here. Wow. That was really hot. Okay. Wow, it's still sizzling. Ugh, it smells like cancer. So yeah, not an entirely unproductive day. Uh, learned a few things about how the oil burner works. Got it fired up. Uh, I know how to prime it now. I know how the air adjustment works. I know that it gets pretty darn hot, so I think it's uh, definitely up to melting some aluminum. So I want to give a shout out to Paul's Garage and SW Dweeb. I've been following both these guys on, on their channels and they've got some great casting videos, uh, foundry builds, funny guys too. So go check them out. I'm going to put links in the comments or in the description down below. So, uh, so check those guys out. Yeah, so I guess the next step is to weld up something i'm gonna i'm gonna have to cut a hole and get the oil burner mounted so it's pointing into here so i have something to direct the heat into um yeah so this is going to be an experiment all right so thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and if you like where this is headed hit that subscribe button to see my future videos of how this is going to turn out i don't know how it's going to work out but uh i'm going to post the videos if it fails or not so i'd love to hear your comments so if you guys have any experience with oil burners um, safety aspects, tips, um, reasons I shouldn't use one in a foundry, please leave them in the comments below. So again, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.